you saw the person in the dream. Another sect is those that actually they heard from God and, and God said this is the person that, that they were going to get married. The will of God is a position. If that person leaves that position, somebody else can feel in that position. <laughs> I have utmost respect for the Bamelois and the Lawrence Gombo Oyo's family, their contributions and impact to the body of Christ, their indelible varying capacities to win people to the kingdom is so conspicuous, but that the idea from Darasemi Oyo is quite unbiblical. My argument is this, and to answer this specific question, I will need to answer a broader question that I believe gives the underlying reasons for why many believe that God chooses spouses for us and we do not have any choice in the matter. I believe the broader question has to do with the idea that people have about God's guidance. Does the Lord guide us in a direct way today by His Holy Spirit? If so, He exact influence upon us that affects how we choose in various areas of our life. This is the real question and I would answer it it's going to be a lengthy argument but first i believe thinking that god almost makes decisions for us in our lives without our responsibility comes from our misunderstanding of how god guides us by his spirit this is often based on the misunderstanding of john 16 13. but when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own initiative but whatever he is he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come yeah jesus before the night he died speaks to his apostles about what is going to come after his death he mentions the coming of the Holy spirit and the role they would play in revealing truth to the apostles not us but the apostles and they not us will be directly guided by the spirit in what they should teach and even where they should preach at various times unfortunately many have misunderstood this to mean that they would receive personal guidance in every day of our, of our lives decisions from the Holy Spirit. However, this has not been promised to any of us. We are guided today by the written word revealed by the Spirit to the apostles, which contains principles that we should follow in making our lives decisions. Second Peter 1 3 says, God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of it has called us to glory and virtue. Romans 10, 17, 2 Timothy 3, 14 to 17 explicitly states this. Even when the Holy Spirit was guiding the apostles to write God's word, it did not prevent them from making mistakes in their lives. We can also find this in Galatians 2, 11 to 14, where Paul was correcting Peter because Peter played an hypocritical role when he was feasting with the Gentiles. So in other words, God does not really tell us who to marry, what job to take, or where to live, but we have principles given to us that helps us make these decisions. For example, Ephesians 4.28 tells us to work with our hands what is good so that we can provide for ourselves and for others. Therefore, we are free to do or choose whatever job we can do except those jobs that would call on us to do things that are sinful. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. The point of Hebrew 1 is to show the supremacy of Christ. God used to speak through the prophet, but now he has done something even better. He has spoken to us by sending his son to us. While Hebrews 1 is all about Jesus, I think we can learn from these first two verses about how God has spoken I can think speak to us today. Of two times in the old Bible, God did tell someone to marry. In Hosea 1 verse 2, God commanded the prophet Hosea, Go take to yourself a wife of wardom and have children of wardom. This was not for Hosea's sake and is definitely not the norm. God tells us to pursue marriage with those who share our faith and walk in holiness. God told us here to marry this prostitute as a visual lesson for all of God's people. God gives you reason for this marriage. Go take to yourself a wife of wardom and have children of wardom, for the land commits great wardom by forsaking the Lord. Osea's marriage was a powerful picture of God's pursuit of his wayward people. 
And also the second example is found in the New Testament when an angel of God told Joseph not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife. Was this merely for Joseph's comfort and pleasure? Hardly. God was intent on fulfilling his redemptive purposes. The fullness of time had come. Joseph needed to marry the Virgin Mary so that centuries of prophecy might be fulfilled and God's redemptive plan could come to pass. We have the freedom to choose. God does not speak directly telling you who to marry or who not to. And when we assume that God is speaking to us individually apart from his word, we elevate ourselves to the status of a prophet. When we call our own thoughts God's words, we are thinking too highly of ourselves and not nearly highly enough of God. And what does this mean in regard to marriage? God gives us great freedom in choosing whom we will marry. So marvel at the fact that God has spoken to us through sending his son, his beloved son, accept that that word is enough for you and then wisely choose whom you will marry and somebody that shares the same faith the same principles with you. Now let us look at the father of faith, Abraham. Abraham was married before God called him. God never told him to forsake Sarah or to choose another wife. Let's look at the son Isaac. Isaac wasn't told specifically who to marry. Eliezer, the servant of Abraham, through God's providence, saw Rebekah and chose. And that was because she exhibited good wifely traits. Jacob loved Rachel. And nothing in the Bible indicated that God directly told him who to choose. Even Joseph, who had God with him all through his life, didn't hear specifically from God. He even married a non-Israelite. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says Jesus the same yesterday, today and forever and Malachi says that God doesn't change. God's position is immutable and he doesn't tell you who to marry. What if the person doesn't love you? What if the person dies or has a medical ailment that makes you incompatible? We used to go ahead it's strong because you heard from God? God is concerned, mainly concerned about our Christ-likeness and not our choices. He has given us free will and he doesn't impose his will on us, not even salvation. 